Hi, I'm Janice Frank, and today I'm going to show you how to knit a dishcloth. It's also cider day. Hi, today I'm going to show you how to knit a dishcloth. This is the next in my series of how to do whatever. Um, so far I have showed you how to crochet a dishcloth. If you're so inclined you can go to this link and if you're watching on YouTube you can just click that link and you can go to that particular video that shows you how to make a dishcloth if you know how to crochet. Um, this particular pattern is for knitting. It's not overly complicated. It uses all of three stitches if you're counting like casting on, knitting, and knitting a long stitch which is kind of the same thing so I'm counting it as one and also you need to know how to cast off if you don't know how to do any of those stitches that's fine I will show you in close-ups how to do it so you can learn for yourself um, once again this is a great project if you're a beginning knitter if you're new to the whole thing of knitting also, I have crocheted uh, edge around the dishcloth in single crochets. If you don't know how to single crochet, that's totally okay. You don't have to make the edging around it. You can just make the knitted dishcloth. Um, just be aware that when you make that dishcloth, once you start using it, it may stretch out a little longer or wider depending on how you use it mostly. It's kind of a wear and tear thing if you know what I'm talking about. I also have a variety of other patterns, knitting patterns that are online. If you are a more experienced knitter, you can go and check those out. I have a complete tutorial on how to knit a pair of slippers from start to finish. If you are so interested, you can download that or follow the link in the description. Um, I also have another pattern for knitting on how to knit a scarf. It is a little more complicated than other patterns that I've put on here so far. It's definitely not a beginner project. You're going to want to take your time, learn all your basic stitches first, and then go from there. You can also make this as big as you want it to be. Um, I've made the pattern to have 35 stitches, but you can make this as wide as you would like. If you would like to have a more wider dishcloth, you can add 5, 10, 15, 20 stitches. I don't know why you'd want anything that big. That's a little ridiculous. Um, if you want it narrower, you can always do that too. There is no particular number of stitches that it has to be. If you feel that you need more or need less, it's totally what you want. You can also do as many rows as you would like. If you want to do that, you can make it as long as you want. You can make it considerably longer. And honestly, if you were so inclined, you could use this whole pattern to make yourself a very lovely scarf if you wanted to. If you made it 35 stitches wide, it would be about that wide, and if you just kept on going, you could use any kind of yarn and you can have sort of a lacy looking kind of scarf. Okay, well, what I think we're going to do now is I am going to show you what we need for things to make this particular pattern. Pretty basic, pretty simple once again. Once again, just like for the crochet pattern, you need to have a ball. This is one of the small balls, but you can use the larger ones that you can find in the big box stores. This particular ball, it's 100% cotton, and I can't stress enough, if you are making this into a dishcloth, you want to use 100% cotton yarn. Anything else that's a blend of anything isn't going to wash properly, and it's not going to wear very well either. Do not, do not, do not get anything with a wool blend, because a wool is going to felt over time, and then you're going to have this lumpy, felted mass of... Ugh. To wash your dishes with that takes forever to dry don't even bother if i don't care what a good sale it is or what a good deal it is or if somebody gave it to you do not even bother with that so like i said 100 percent cotton um this pattern is going to take up pretty much this whole ball if not it'll be a little bit less and you'll have some leftovers that's not bad that's for the 35 stitches that i've written this particular pattern for so it is a 50 gram ball of yarn and one and three quarter ounces it's four ply, 100% cotton yarn. There's a lot of different makers out there that make cotton yarn. Pick whatever you want. As long as it's worsted weight or the four ply, you're doing fine. It'll be great. You don't really have to worry so much about gauge and how many stitches per inch or how many rows per inch. It's a dishcloth or a scarf. I don't know if you're so inclined to make a blanket. Well, I guess that's your call, but I wouldn't recommend that. Get pretty boring after all. So anyway, that's what you need. You need this. You will also need to use a size 3 knitting needle if you're in the US. 
I don't know what that translates if you are in Canada. I probably should have looked that up before I started. Oops. These are a lot narrower than most of the other knitting needles that I use for most of my projects thus far. Um, we're using thin needles because that lacy stitch, that lacy row that's going to be in the pattern for the dishcloth um, is actually because you're wrapping it around your needle and if you have a needle that is too thick around it makes for a really long lacy stitch and for a dishcloth it needs to be a little bit tighter just if you decide that you want to do the single crocheted edge, you're going to need a size 8 crochet hook, a 5 millimeter crochet hook if you're using the metric system. You'll also need to have a needle to sew in your edges or to sew in your ends when you're finished. So you need to have one of these needles. They're a little bit thicker so you can get yarn through them. They're fairly large. Scissors to cut stuff. Cheers. Happy knitting. We're going to get started. Delish. All right, so you get your end of your yarn like you always do. Take your knitting needle. Like I was saying before, we're going to cast on 35 stitches. And this is, if you don't want 35, if you want to have it a little smaller, you can do 30. If you want it a little larger, you could do 40. None of that really matters. So you just cast on your 35 stitches. listening to a lot of Led Zeppelin before I started this today, so I have a lot of Led Zeppelin songs running through my head. Ah! Sorry. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. You just keep going until you have 35 stitches in total. Now, I always double count to make sure that I have the correct number of stitches. It's not so important for this one because, like I said, this really can be anything. It's a dishcloth or a scarf or whatever you've decided to make. Um, if you're doing a more complicated project, uh, if you're making my slippers, for instance, you're going to want to make sure that your stitch count is correct. And the best way to start your stitch count is to make sure that you double check how many stitches you've cast on. Just makes things a lot easier in the long run. Count twice. Knit once. Six. So I now have 35 stitches all ready to go. And now we are going to knit across. So now we have knit one row, I shall show you here. So we've now completed our one row knit and now we're going to knit again for four rows. So when you're doing this, you're going to knit five rows and knitting is one of the most basic stitches that you could possibly do. So if you can master the knit doing this scarf, you're doing awesome. If you need some extra help with your stitches, if you need some extra help with how to cast on, or you need some help with how to do the knitting stitch, I have other videos that I did years ago that show you exactly how to cast on and how to knit. The link will be in the description if you need it. So now I'm knitting the third row across. Okay, so now we're done the third row. So now we're starting the fourth row. And once again, you just knit every stitch straight across. So row four is now completed. 
Now we're starting on row five. You know what else you could do? Since I need to fill this time that I'm knitting this row, why don't you subscribe to my channel? The link to my page where you can subscribe is at the end of the video, if you're so inclined. I'd really appreciate it, actually, if you did. And follow me on Facebook. I put a lot of stuff over on Facebook, and if it's not my pattern, if I find something really interesting on Facebook, a lot of times I'll share um, interesting crafty links over there too. Um, it's come to the point now where people I know on Facebook, on my personal account, will tag me with knitting and crocheted patterns and other little neat things that they find. And a lot of times I'll share them with the people over on my page because if it's neat, great, why not? I particularly enjoy sharing free patterns with people, even if they're not mine over on my page. So you probably should go over there and check it out. Okay, we are now done. Row number five. Row five, um, with your work facing you. So now we are going to actually be working on the wrong side. So when the work is facing you, you're gonna wanna have your dead end, I guess, the end that you started with. You're gonna wanna have this facing on your right side. So when you're doing it, it's going to be over here. This next row can be a little bit tricky, but really, once you get a hang of doing this stitch, it's very, very easy also. So you just put your needle through like you're going to knit the stitch regularly. Instead of just wrapping the yarn around once, we're going to wrap it around twice. And then you're going to pull it through the stitch and drop it. So you stick it through the stitch, wrap it around twice, pull it through like you would any other knitted stitch, and drop it. Put your needle through like you're going to knit wrap the yarn around twice and pull it through. A couple of hints I can give you on this. So wrap it around twice and pull it through. You don't want to wrap the yarn too tight around your needle because then it will be too hard to pull it back through that loop. Um, one of the things I can suggest is that as you're pulling it through you put your finger on the end of the needle so it won't slip off. And then with your thumbnail you can sort of push that yarn down your needle a little bit to give it a little extra help to go down so it won't fall off. So wrap it around, finger on the end of the needle, push it through, thumbnail catches it, pushes it down the needle and drop the stitch. We are now done the sixth row which is going to make our extra loopy stitches that make a bit of a lace pattern as far as the dishcloth is concerned. It looks pretty neat. Um, so that's it. That's row six right there. We're back to repeating our pattern over and over again. So now we're going to knit across like we did before. Only this time it's going to be a little bit different because we have that extra twist or loop that's on the needle. When you pull down your work you're going to see that it's going to make a bit of a hole there. Just put your needle through and just knit the stitch like you normally would. And it's going to be a longer stitch. That's what we want so you don't need to worry about that. So you just pull it down a little bit, put your needle through that hole, and knit your stitch like you normally would. And you just do that all the way down the line. Just knit the stitches. And they'll fall and they'll be a little bit longer. Totally okay. It's totally the look that we're after. We're done our first row after our lacy row. You're going to notice that these stitches along here are all a lot bigger than the other ones. But that's okay. That's what we wanted. That's what's going to give us our awesome look when it's all finished. Now, all you need to do is knit across for four more rows. So you have a total of five rows. Okay, so now we're done. Five whole rows. Five whole rows of knitting. It's going to look exactly like that. Okay. Now, all you're going to do is repeat the lacy row and those five rows eight more times to get a fairly squarish dishcloth. And now, with the magic of technology and wonderfulness, we are going to show you how to cast off and put the edge on if you want to put the edge on. Like I said before, you don't have to put the edge on if you're a non-crochet type person and you're like, no, no crochet for me. No. That's fine. You don't have to do the crocheted edge. You can just leave it. I'm not going to come over there and like get all upset if you don't. I really, I got bigger fish to fry in my life than that. Let me just put it that way. So now through the magic and wonders of technology, 
Hot? Huh? How did that happen so fast? It's like I planned ahead. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cast off and make a nice finished edge up here in knitting. Okay? So casting off is fairly easy. What you do is it looks like you're going to knit. And so you knit the stitch, drop it, and then you knit the next stitch. Now here's, here's where it gets a little bit tricky. You're going to grab the stitch off of the other needle that holds your finished stitches and you're going to pull that stitch over top of the stitch that you just made. And you're going to keep doing that down the line. So you knit the next stitch, take the loop from the previous stitch, and pass it over that stitch. And that would be my cat helping out again. Thank you, Devin! So helpful! Thank you! It's always got something to say. And you pass the stitch over, knit the next stitch, pass the last stitch over, and important thing to remember when you're casting off stitches like this, you want to make this loop a little bit looser than you would if you were regularly knitting because you, you want to have enough play in the loop to be able to pass it over and to not have it too tight because it'll pull your work together and will sort of make a funny finished edge, which you don't want. So you grab the loop, pass it over, pull it a little bit, knit the next stitch, pass the stitch over. Knit the stitch, pass the stitch over. You're going to have a loop left on your knitting needle. Just pull that through. Now if you were done and you didn't want to do the single crochet edge along the dishcloth, that's fine. That's totally doable. What you would do is just break your yarn and put the end of your yarn through that loop that you had previously. And you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to catch that loop with your crochet hook. You want to readjust your yarn over to the other side because now you're crocheting and that's kind of a different thing. Um, you're going to want to chain one and put three stitches into this corner stitch so it'll lay flat. Just like that. And then with each of your five rows that you've made here you're going to want to put two single crochets in those five rows and then one single crochet into the lacy row two single crochets in those five rows and then one single crochet into the lacy row And keep going down the line. Now when you get to the corner you're going to want to put three stitches, three single crochets into that corner stitch so it'll lay flat when it's finished and single crochet in each stitch going down the back side of the dishcloth. So these are all the stitches that were originally cast on when you started this project. And you just keep on going down there as you were before. And when you're doing this, it's one stitch per one stitch. Seems to turn out alright. It's loose enough that it takes it up and it doesn't seem to be And if you are doing this edge, one of the things I'm going to show you that you're really going to appreciate and you don't really even realize right now how much you're going to appreciate it. Um, once again, in the corner, three single crochets just to make sure that it's going to lay flat. Um, your finished, your unfinished end that you have here, this thing, this unfinished end, you can use your needle that I showed you before to work in your end when you're finished making the piece. Um, I'm also going to show you a handy little trick on how to work this in as you're doing it so it actually saves you a little bit of time in the process. So when you're doing it, take your unfinished end and just hold it above your crochet hook when you're making the stitch. So it's going to, you're going to put the crochet hook through the row that you're making your stitch through and you're going to lay that unworked end over top of your crochet hook. 
you're going to hook your yarn and pull it through and single crochet the stitch. You only need to do it maybe about four or five times to hook that yarn in the back of your work and then it'll be fine. And once again when you're working along the edge you're going to put two stitches into the five rows, one stitch into the lacier stitch. Alright, so now we're at the top of the work. We're going to work our two stitches into that row of five and we're going to do three stitches into the original stitch that we cast off. So we're now working on the cast off row. We're at the very, very top of the work. So you're going to want to work three stitches into that. single crochet in each stitch across. All right, now we're getting down to the last couple stitches. So one stitch in each stitch. Then in the first single crochet that you made, you're going to put your hook through that top of the single crochet, hook your yarn, pull it through, and then pull it through that loop, break off your yarn and ta-da! You are done your dishcloth and it has a lovely finished edge. Ta-da! 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 Look what you did! Look what you did! You made one of these! Look at that! You made one of these! You should be very proud! Ta-da! That's it! And so now I'm going to show you how to finish off this end so you don't just have a big old knot there and it doesn't come undone and then you are finished. And you can be all happy and proud and you can be like, yeah, bitches, I made that. Mm. now officially done showing you how to make a lovely lovely dishcloth as you can see the final pattern is actually kind of nice you can make that into a scarf and it would still look quite beautiful I think that's just me I'm just saying I just wanted to show you how to do this instead because well frankly it doesn't take as long and that's pretty much all that I wanted to do so once again thank you so much for watching I hope you found my video very very informative and you learned a lot from it um, if at first you don't succeed keep on trying if it doesn't work out the first time Start again. Knitting is one of those things, once you catch on to it, it's a really fun thing to do and you're really going to enjoy it as a pastime. If you haven't taken the opportunity to download the pattern yet, you can wait to the end of the video. And if you are on a mobile device or on your computer, there will be links at the end that you can click that will take you directly over to my blog. And please subscribe. There is going to be a little round face of me on there. Please click that and subscribe to my channel. I'd love to have more people like my channel. It's one of those things. It's like, oh yeah, subscribers. So yeah, go over there and subscribe. I'd really, really appreciate it. Please follow me on all of my internet incarnations. I'm over on Facebook, one of my favorite places to post. I'm on Instagram. I post on there occasionally too. I'm known as Janice's and Joplin if you wanted to follow me over there. 
And don't forget to check out the trailers that I have for these videos. I really enjoy making them and is one of the highlights of this whole process. So please take the time to go over and look at them and leave a like if you can, have a good laugh, whatever. Yes, they're overly dramatic and I love that they're so overly dramatic. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Happy knitting!